In a previous video, we saw that there was a regained interest in increasing the quality of mortars at the turn of the 19th century. This led to producing hydraulic limes capable of hardening in contact with water and in absence of air, a property then much sought for for building tunnels and or harbors. Because of marketing reasons, some of these hydraulic limes became known as Roman cements, although they have nothing to do with the Pozzolanic mortars used by the Romans. In fact, they are better referred to as natural cements, and this video establishes their chemistry as an intermediate position in the history of mineral binders between Pozzolanic mortars and Portland cement. To understand natural cements, we must consider both their composition and firing temperature. In terms of composition, natural cements rely on using a single raw material, a limestone with a rather high clay contents, around 20 to 30 percent. This explains that natural cements have both a large variation of compositions and limited adequate raw materials availability. In terms of processing, they are calcined around 1000 degrees Celsius, with temperatures being quite variable throughout the kiln. For such temperatures, no vitrification, even partial, occurs, so that the more reactive phases obtained in Portland cement do not form. The calcined product contains about 70% crystalline phases, mainly silicates, and 30% amorphous phases, mainly aluminates. Both play an important role in strength development, but at different stages. To look at the reactions taking place in the kiln, we briefly recall the cement chemistry notations. C for CaO, S for SiO2, A for Al2O3, H for H2O, and C' prime for CO2. The first reaction to take place in the kiln, around 650 degrees Celsius, is the dehydroxylation of the clays. Around 850 degrees Celsius, but depending on CO2 partial pressure, limestone, that is calcium carbonate, decomposes to calcium oxide and CO2. At the prevailing temperatures, calcium oxide further reacts with the calcined clays. This consumes silica from those clays, producing dicalcium silicate, 2-CaO-SiO2, noted C2S in cement chemistry. It also leaves a mainly amorphous calcium aluminosilicate phase as side product. The stoichiometry of this aluminosilicate is variable, which is why we best note it C-A-S. This amorphous CAS reacts very rapidly with water, causing the material to set within about 5 to 10 minutes, and develops a minimum strength less than 2 MPa within the first day. As is typical for mineral binders, this reaction produces a substantial solid volume increase that plays a key role in strength development. While the fast setting and early strength of natural cements comes from the aluminates, the longer term strength comes from the hydration of C2S. However, this reaction is slow as it only starts dominating strength after about four weeks and takes several months, at least, to deliver final strength. One mole of C2S reacts with 4.3 moles of water to produce 0.3 moles of calcium hydroxide and one mole of calcium silicate hydrate, CSH, taken here as C1.7SH4. In the video on Pozzolanic mortars, we saw that Roman mortars form a similar compound, incorporating, however, a fair amount of alumina in a product best noted cash. The similarity with CSH formed by C2S in natural cements implies that the term Roman cement is not completely undeserved for natural cements, even if the starting materials are completely different and the products formed only slightly similar. Transforming the hydration of C2S from a molar stoichiometry to a volumetric one, the reaction becomes 
one volume of C2S plus 1.5 volumes of water give 2.2 volumes of CSH and 0.2 volumes of CH. As for the Pozzolanic reaction, the total volume decreases, in this case from a total of 2.5 to 2.4 units, giving a chemical shrinkage of 4.5%, mainly resulting in an internal porosity of the hardened material. More importantly, the solid volume goes from 1 to 2.4 units, corresponding to an increase of 140%, much larger than the 36% increase provided by the Pozzolanic reaction. This explains the higher efficiency of these natural cements over Pozzolanic mortars in terms of final strength. In conclusion, natural cements rely on selecting a single rock as starting material. Their calcination produces a combination of aluminates and silicates that are respectively mainly amorphous and crystalline. The aluminates are responsible for the fast setting and early strength, while the silicates deliver the final strength, but on a much longer time span, typically several months. In a subsequent video, we explain how Portland cement includes more reactive phases, allowing them to develop higher strength and faster, which is why natural cement lost out to Portland cement and largely disappeared in the second half of the 19th century. Nevertheless, natural cements represent an interesting and important intermediate step between Pozzolanic mortars and modern Portland-based cements.